I started looking into this carbon nanotube technology, not to be confused with carbon fiber technology. And it looks very complex, but obviously it looks like it has a lot of uses. But, you know, there's one thing I don't like about something is when a scientist come out with something, they make it so complex. In other words, the cost is going to be way up there, and some petrochemical company is going to have exclusive rights to it. Actually, I think there's simpler solutions that have been developed many years ago. I'll cut right to the chase. Hemp. Again, industrial hemp. But I just want to put that out there right away. But uh, this looks promising. And, you know, it's, it has a, heck, a hell of a lot, of, a lot stronger material than uh, carbon fiber by far. It has a lot more usages, too. It depends on the structure and the way it's made. Uh, properties, carbon nanotubes are among the strongest and stiffest materials yet discovered in terms of tensile strength and elastic modulus, respectively. So it could stretch a little bit, and it has a lot of tensile strength. That's important characteristics. But... Uh, you know, there's something I don't like about this in a way. It's when something becomes patented, somebody has exclusive rights to make it, you know, they'll sell it to the military or some garbage, and then that technology will start getting out to the manufacturing world. But, you know, I think Henry Ford had better technology back in the 30s, and we can grow it right here in the United States. Um, you know, uh, I have a suspicion, I think, uh, Henry Ford was maligned um, for other reasons and because he was getting on things that were putting uh, would take a bite out of other people that had a monopoly on something that's what I think now this is another interesting article about nanotubes a little bit uh, smoking grass not talking about weed I'm talking about you know they probably titled this article to catch some attention this is from 2005 but still, you know, it's, it's new tech because nobody ever heard of it. But smoking grass, not weed, I'm talking about it's actually grass from the gro ground like grows on people's lawns, leads to nanotubes. Scientists in China have developed a new way to make multi-walled carbon nanotubes by heating grass in the presence of oxygen. The nanotubes, which were about one micron long and 30 to 50 nanometers in diameter, could prove useful for catalytic applications. Now, I want to remind people of the little fact that China grows 79% of the hemp in the world. Our very stupid, I'll call them that, elite, quote unquote, whatever you want to call them, people, you know, the people Lindsay Williams calls the elite in the oil industry. You know, the way I look at it, and this just goes to show you how stupid people are, even when they're really up there, they're not really stupid because they're trying to protect their racket. China has got them by the cojones in a way because if they're producing 79% of the hemp in the world, why don't they just make that 99% of the hemp in, you know, in the world and just go to town with this stuff? And I think they will. I think there's probably other forces out there that are probably going to stop them some way or another. But, you know, you talk about energy independence, they could be that way too. I just think that the Chinese communists are actually in cahoots with um, the rest of the elite in the world. That's probably why it's not going to go full tilt all the way that way. But China, if the people actually had the power all the way in that country, they could grow hemp far more than they are now, and they could be energy independent. And they can make materials 10 times stronger than steel without going through the complexity of even these multi-walled uh, carbon nanotubes. Now, an interesting thing is about um, Henry Ford. Now, I know, Henry, I know about what Henry Ford, they said he was anti-Semitic. And I know he wrote, he wrote that stuff in the Dearborn Press, whatever the heck it was, about Jews and stuff. And, you know... Actually, even when there's stories that are anti-Jewish, let me put it this way. There's always a little bit of truth in something. It's not like the whole story's bad. He kind of, he went overboard with the stuff. Yeah, he did. But, you know, I think where he really got in trouble with this stuff was he was stepping on the toes of people that had rackets going. Like in the oil industry in the petrochemical industry, in the pharmaceutical industry. And this Henry Ford actually was a big, um, 
industrial baron that was for the people, for real, for real. This guy really was for the common man, and his ideas were good. So sometimes I think he, he's overplayed with this, because I don't think this guy was a Nazi sympathizer. That's, that's really ridiculous. I know he had articles in that Dearborn Press critical, it's critical of Jews, but in certain instances, it was true of certain people. So the guy, but he kind of he painted too broad of a brush. That was his. That was that was something he did wrong. But I don't think he was trying to like, you know. But I think they kind of pumped that up a little bit more, because they had to find any reason to smear this guy to stop him, because he actually is on a product that's good for all the people, just like. Um, they smeared Mexicans by saying they grew marijuana to, and they harassed white people or something like that. To, um, so you had to make marijuana illegal and you had to make industrial hemp illegal. And, you know, it's like you got to find a reason to get the middle class to go along with getting after this guy. So the middle class has this one thing in their head that Henry Ford was an anti-Semite. I don't know. I don't think so. But I don't. I didn't read everything the guy said. But you know, if you get into that, sometimes you know who the heck knows. I mean, I don't know. If, you know, he's. I don't think he's anywhere near as bad as they said. I think he was a guy out for the people. Ford rec Henry Ford recognized the utility of the hemp plant. He constructed a car of resin stiffened hemp fiber, and even ran the car on ethanol made from hemp. Ford knew that hemp could be produced could produce vast economic resources if widely cultivated. And he actually, um, you know, he shows him here, you know, he's hitting a uh, car, you know, here, doing a demonstration, hitting a trunk lid of a car with a big hammer, right? And it was made from 70% hemp cellulose. Very, very strong, 10 times stronger than steel. And it was just bouncing off the trunk lid of this car without putting a dent in it and without cracking it. So um, way ahead of its time. And this was 1941. So to me, the product for carbon nanotubes has already been out. It's actually been hemp. It actually has been. And, um, you know, also to talk about gasoline, you know, I swear to you, I think it was the uh, crude oil industry that, really did anything they could to stop Henry Ford and probably that is why you know I don't know how true that stuff is but I think they really pushed the angle about the Ford anti-semitism because his ideas were going to take away from the oil industry and the oil industry and the uh, petrochemical industry and the pharmaceutical industry has a big racket going that's really what it is. It's just a racket. That's all it is. Uh, gasoline, which is produced from crude oil, has many disadvantages as an automotive resource. This new fuel, gasoline, had a lower octane rating than the ethanol, which is produced from like corn or hemp or anything. It was much more toxic, particularly when blended with tetraethyl ethyl lead and other compounds to enhance octane, generally more dangerous and contain threatening air pollutants. So in other words, when you run on hempoline, it's a lot cleaner. Petroleum was more likely to explode and burn accidentally. Gum would form on storage surfaces, so they always had to add additives. Carbon deposits would form in combustion chambers of engines. Pipelines were needed for distribution from area found to area needed. You know, so you had to pipe it in. Petroleum was much more physically and chemically diverse than ethanol, which came from plants, hemp, necessitating complex refining procedures to ensure the manufacture of a consistent gasoline product. And you know, as a little adjunct, it's very, very easy to make um, automobiles run on compressed natural gas, which runs approximately a dollar a gallon equivalent. Another product that's out there in abundance in the United States. So there is a racket going on. That's 99% of the problem that's going on with everything. There's a racket. And you got to fight him a piece at a time. You just can't march in the street. <laughs> it doesn't do a damn bit of good. I mean, you might send your congressman a postcard, but I don't think that's going to do a hell of a lot of good. I think the way to really get him is to just keep buying products that contain, don't contain the petroleum, but contain hemp. You know, if you can find clothes that are made from hemp, 
buy hemp clothes, buy hemp oil, buy hemp protein, that type of stuff. Yeah, this was really started out as a carbon nanotube uh, type of video, but I find that this is actually such a complex technology. I kind of don't like it. I kind of don't like it because I think we have something that's a lot simpler that works just as well and you can grow. And, you know, it does look like, you know, you could take ordinary grass, like I'm not talking marijuana grass, I'm talking about grass that grows on a lawn and you can make nanotubes from it. So I'd almost think there's probably a way to make nanotubes from hemp versus carbon fiber or carbon, carbon. Carbon nanotubes are not to be confused with carbon fiber, but carbon nanotubes are coming from a petroleum-based product. I think there's ways to make nanotubes from hemp, too. So I would get away from this entire oil industry, period. And if the oil industry is needed in one area, it should strictly be as lubricants or something like that for machinery. And never for a mineral oil for skin, because that's very bad. That's in a lot of skin care products. I think people should avoid the oil industry as much as possible. And, you know, I don't know about this Henry Ford being so um, anti-Semitic or anything. I don't think the guy was, to tell you the truth. He might have been a little bit, but I don't think he was in general. And um, I think some of those stories were blown out of proportion, especially the stuff about it being a Nazi sympathizer. That seems really um, 180 degrees off from some of the things he did with his life, like having a peace ship that went around the world trying to uh, promote peace during uh, World War I and put an end to the war. Um, I think the guy had a very good, um, you know, heart in, his, in himself, but... Uh, he did recognize there's a couple of bad apples amongst Jews, too, that are very, very high-end elite people, and they had some involvement in a war. So he brought some of that stuff out, and I think that part is legit. Just don't paint too broad of a brush against people. That's the one thing. You don't want to do that. But uh, may, he may be a little bit guilty of that, but I don't think he generally is because I think the real smear campaign came about because he had some good ideas. Hemp could be produced vast economic resources if widely cultivated. It would replace the oil industry. It would replace most of the steel industry. It would replace automobile gasoline. There would be a heck of a lot pollution, less pollution on the earth too because the cars would run cleaner. And actually, the automobile with a cleaner fuel, just as even natural gas, which is not from uh, plant material, but even natural gas will run a heck of a lot cleaner than gasoline, and it's plentiful all over this country. But we do have an established racket going on here. And, you know, I don't know, I got kind of annoyed about this, because actually, I will slam anti-Semites, but... I don't think Henry Ford was an anti-Semite, and it kind of got me mad when I saw this on here, but I had a little comment on that a little bit to excess, because uh, I don't think he was. I think he was uh, a guy that was getting after the big oil company conspiracy. How's that? Uh, you know, I think they are a conspiracy, to tell you the truth, and uh, uh, he had a product for the people. Hemp for the people. How's that, right? Hemp for the people. Remember that.